PBA Tour Finals happening in Allen Park at the historic Thunder Bowl is happening this weekend. And eight of the best PBA bowlers over the last two and a half years will duel it out in five televised contests that happen all right in this awesome arena. Observe a domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Hey, you think I should light it now? I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall which can start a wildfire. Wait, what could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. What's the hey, it's here? Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, see, no, you said make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless furry friend here, yeah. humans. I appreciate it. Fist bump. <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. With me is uh, Jesper Svensson of Gothenburg, Sweden. Holy smokes, bowling is international. Now, how popular is bowling in Sweden? Uh, bowling is uh, quite popular, but uh, Sweden seems to love ice hockey and soccer, but bowling is growing for sure, and um, yeah, that's good. It sure is good, and not only is that good, but so is your performance over the last two and a half years. You've already had, what, one finals appearance, what, this year on the tour? And uh, what, what's it, what is it like bowling in the finals? Is there a lot of extra pressure with the people out there bowling, or you just kind of tune them out and use them to feel your performance? Um, just need to try to, to get it as an extra focus, I think. And, uh, I mean, that's what you want to be. So... Um, to perform uh, in front of a big crowd is uh, one of the best things you can do. Now, you can't play defense in bowling, but you can get them behind you. Is there any little mental tactics that you use to get the crowd behind you to kind of to kind of propel you a little bit? Well, that's a good question. You just try to to do your thing when you're out on the lanes. And, um, of course, you want to show off a little bit to the crowd, but um, it comes down to your frames and your shots, and you better make sure you throw it as good as you can to have a chance to win out here. And taking a look at that, you have, <coughs> excuse me, the bowl, you have one bowler out here that has won nine majors. And then the rest of you guys combined have won a total of nine majors. Do you feel, how do you feel like your experience stacks up with some of the other players that are going to be out there for the PBA finals this weekend? You know, of course they have plenty of experience, all of those guys, but you know, I'm, I'm quite young and, and still pretty experienced for my age, I think. And, um, yeah, I mean, as I said before, all I, all I can do is try to do as good as I can. And and um, I know that if I have it, I'm tough to beat. Well, and not only are you tough to beat, in 2016, you won the Fire Lake PBA uh, Tournament of Champions. You were the youngest player to ever do it. So you that's an excellent notch on your belt. How did it feel to get that first notch under your belt? Absolutely amazing. You know, that was uh, at the start of my uh, professional career. And I remember I was on a flight uh, here to the States and was thinking like, oh, it's going to be a quite expensive experience, but and that's what you have to do. And a few days later, I was standing there with that cup of, above my head. So that was just unreal. And um, yeah, it's really forced me to get better every day to, to uh, get that feeling again. Jasper, it's been awesome talking with you. Great luck this weekend. I know that uh, you're going to hold up some hardware. At least uh, you got a great shot at it. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. With us is Marshall Ken of Yakima, Washington. Uh, Marshall, so far you've had a successful 2018. You've already got a couple of uh, finals appearances. Uh, how do you feel like your season's went so far? Yeah, it's been, uh... It's been really close to being really good. I feel uh, pretty confident going into this next event. And, uh, you know, all you can do is put yourself on TV. You know, after that, it's kind of a um, whoever's day it is. And one game match, anything can happen. And 
you know, I've put myself there enough times. I feel like I'm going to break through pretty soon. Now, you've already won $53,000 in uh, 2018, and the year's just going. It must make you feel good knowing that you're cashing in every tournament because people don't realize this. You either cash or you go home uh, broke. Yeah, it's, it's tough being a bowler because um, I guess uh, Ryan Simonelli puts it the best way. He says, uh, you know, imagine going to work, working a 40-hour work week, and then at the end of the week, your boss says, hey, you know, you did you did a good job, but we're not paying you this week. And that's kind of what it's like for us missing a cut or missing a cash. You know, it's it's tough sometimes. But when you're bowling well, it, it gets a little easier. Now, a moment ago that you mentioned that, you know, obviously you don't play defense in bowling, but you can get the crowd behind you, and that can be a pretty good defense right there if they're starting to, to get behind you and get behind that strike or so. And some of these guys are really just sliding on their knees and doing all kinds of crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Do you have any tactics to help get the crowd behind you? Uh, I have got, I have a couple, yeah. I'm not going to reveal them, but there's you know there's ways to get the fans behind your back, and you know momentum's uh, everything. You have, you get the crowd going your way, start cheering for you, feel good, and then all of a sudden it's easier to throw those two strikes in a row to get back in the game. Now taking a look, you've got I, totally. I think the eight players have won 18 uh, major championships. One player has won nine. Is what is it for you? I mean. Does that intimidate you at all when you have somebody who's won nine championships, or when you get in the ring, it's all the same? It's all the same. It doesn't matter. It's the the guy I'm bowling is just a shadow. It's me versus the lanes, and I, my score has to be his score. It's simple as that. Now, one other thing: this arena is one of the most famous arenas in the country. You've heard of all the great winners from Pete Weber, Car Carmen Salvino, Don Carter's won here, Kelly uh, Kulik. Every, a lot of people have won. I mean, does this get you extra pumped up coming to a place that's known for bowling? Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to a good weekend of bowling and uh, just the, the atmosphere itself should be, it's, it'll be a lot of fun. You're going to win this tournament if what happens? Say that again? You're going to win this tournament if one thing happens. What is it? If I beat my opponents. <laughs> Every <laughs> time. That. Every time. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. Well, there you go. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and you have a great luck bowling in the tournament. And hopefully you'll be holding home the hardware at the end of uh the end of Saturday's performance, Friday and Saturday, actually. I Thanks hope so, lot. too. Thank you. you. Got it. Thank you. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right. I said it. Tell me when you're ready. You got us centered? Okay. With me is EJ Tackett of Huntington, Indiana. EJ, you won this uh, tournament stop last year. That's got to give you a lot of confidence going into this one for the PBA Tour Finals. Uh, absolutely. You know, um, I've had a good couple years the last couple, and uh, I haven't been able to successfully defend a title yet. Uh, that's the one thing in my career that I haven't really done yet, and uh, I haven't even been in close to doing that. And I've one of those things that I really want to do that for me personally just one of those things to, to repeat and, and defend a title. Now you're one of just a handful of players during the course of your career and it's a young career to win the PBA player of the year and the rookie of the year. What is I mean what goes through your mind I mean that that blows me away that you've done it at such a young age. Yeah it's it's really cool um, I, I've joined a very elite group of guys there's only four or five other guys that have ever done it and um, just to just to be in that group is is really cool to join those those few guys. And a little side note with uh, when I won the Player of the Year in 2016, Chris Schenkel is actually born in my hometown, so we're from the same place. And Chris Schenkel, that is a tough act to follow, folks. Does he have any streets named after him, or are you going to beat him to it? <laughs> no, he doesn't have any streets named after him. But the the little town in our county that he's from, they have a they have signage up saying, you know, home of Chris Schenkel. So it's pretty cool to drive by every now and then. Yeah, I met him one time with Bo Burton, you know, way back in, before they took it off ABC TV. And uh, it was a real honor. And he was such a versatile broadcaster. So to come from his hometown must be a real honor. Absolutely. Um, I didn't. I was never fortunate enough to, to meet him. Uh, he died, I think, in 2006, 2007, something, something like that. Something along those lines. Something along that. And I, I, I wish I could have met him. 
Um, you know, it's one of those parts of my life I'm sad that I didn't get to meet him at some point. Let's talk more about this tournament. Do you have four distinct oil patterns that are out there, and you kind of know ahead of time what you're going to hit? How much practice do you do on each one of those patterns, or is it really different with atmospheric changes? Take us through what it's like to go from game to game on a different pattern. Um, well, you know, there's, there's a lot of factors that go into how the lanes will play. Um, I'm going to go in and practice on all the patterns uh, tomorrow morning and just see, see what happens on each one. That I might have to spend a little bit more time on, on one pattern or another. Um, so that works out like that sometimes. Sometimes you get on a pattern and it just fits your eye right, your ball's doing the right thing. Other patterns I might have to do, put in a little bit more work. So uh, we'll just have to see tomorrow when I come in. Now you, uh, now you come here with a certain amount of bowling balls, but how many do you usually drill in the course of a tournament because of something you didn't expect? Um, again, it depends on, on, on that week. Sometimes I'll drill one or two. Sometimes I'm drilling six or seven. Um, it all depends on what I'm seeing on the lanes, whether I, I really think I need to fill a gap that, that I didn't have when I came here or, um, you know, something, something weird happens. The lanes change a little bit day to day just from the, the re-oil. Um, so sometimes I see little changes that I, I might need to drill a new ball, but it, it, it all depends on the week and what, what I'm seeing on the lanes. Final question, E.J. Tackett wins this tournament if this happens. Uh, knock down the most pins. That's plain and simple. That's, that's what our sport's all about. you got to beat your opponents and knock down the most pins. And uh, I just got to go out there and focus and, and do that and do my thing. And uh, hopefully at the end of the week I'll come out victorious. E.J., it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Good luck, and uh, hopefully you'll be holding the hardware and spending the money in a couple of days. I sure hope so. Hi, my name is Stuart Green. Ashley Branch. And my name is Cole Butler. Hi, my name is Amanda Hoffman, and I play softball. And I play basketball. I play soccer. Basketball and football at Petoskey High School. Point City High School. I play soccer at Elk Rapids High School. Grayling High School. At Harbor Springs High School. Thank you for tuning in and watching a Michigan High School Athletic Association contest. We hope to see you back online soon watching more of our great sportsmanship, athletes, and extracurricular excellence. And extracurricular excellence. We are MHSAA. Sounds good. Okay, with me is Tommy Jones of Simpsonville, South Carolina. This is uh, how much? This is what you were fourth in this event last year. Yeah, last year we bowled this uh, this event in Orlando, and uh, you know, bowled okay, but uh, didn't come out on top and lost the three four match to Jesper, who's uh, bowling again this year. So, uh, look for a little better finish this year. Now you have won 18 career titles, but you and you won two major titles. What do you think has been the highlight of your career thus far? Uh, definitely winning the U.S. Open. Uh, it's, you know, the toughest test in bowling. Uh, so many entries with amateurs and everybody else. Uh, the pattern's really hard, and obviously the payday of it's uh, amazing. It paid 100000 when I won. It was just a uh, you know, highlight of, of what's happened so far in my life. Now, you must really like sushi. I mean, uh, you've won the Japan Cup three times. Uh, what is it about Japan that uh, suits your game? Uh, I really don't know. I just uh, always bowled good in Japan. Maybe uh, the opposite of eating sushi I don't eat I don't eat fish at all so um, pretty picky eater but uh, the people there are great I really enjoy going to Japan obviously and I've had a lot of success there and look forward to going back. Now what is it like in the international game bowling is still very competitive the league plays way down but what's it like when you go to Japan or Sweden or some of these other countries uh, does that rejuvenate you going to some of these places watching their fans? Well, bowling is uh, it's pretty big around the world. It's and their bowlers are catching up to uh, how good the uh, the Americans are. Uh, I bowled for Team USA for 15 years now, and uh, seeing it progress is how it's come and how these other countries have come from where we used to beat up on them really easily. Now they've gotten very competitive and, and even and they win a lot too now. And uh, you know it, it is refreshing to go and see that that, that the rest of the world's catching on to what a great sport this is in bowling, and everybody can do it from all ages and all sizes. Now you've been a Team USA member for 11 straight years, including this year. You know, you compete against these guys and you have to beat each other up to earn a living. But when you get the bowl side by side to hold that Team USA flag, how is that different? How does that help you to build some camaraderie with some of the other tour players? Well, anytime you get to bowl with red, white, and blue on and you have a chance to stand up on the podium and get a gold medal and then play the national anthem, there is absolutely nothing like it. It still gives me chills every time that I'm fortunate enough to win a medal for the, for the United States. Uh, but, you know, I've got to create a lot of friends around the world and uh, got to be, you know, um, some amazing relationships and things like that. And, you know, we visit each other. They come visit me and, and come to the house and we have a good time. So, you know, these are all memories that, uh, you know, you'll look back on when I'm when I'm done bowling and be very, very proud of. 
Final question. You're bowling in one of the most historic uh, uh, you know, houses in uh, all of America in the Thunder Bowl. I mean, the who's who of bowling have won championships or have at least bowled in this arena. Does it to something that you really look forward to and pencil in on your calendar uh, ahead of time when you knew you were coming? Well, I, I grew up being a, a huge fan of bowling from, from the time I was really little and could tell you all the stats and everything from who won titles and everything else like that. Being in Thunder Bowl and seeing some of the uh, some of the, the pitchers and everything they have over there with some of the greats that have all bowled here, the team bowling, everything, to be in the arena is definitely an honor and something that I look forward to every year. Tommy, it has been awesome, and good luck this weekend. Hopefully uh, you'll win a lot of cash and maybe hold uh, the big trophy and the honors and get your third career major title. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hope you guys uh, hope come out and watch this weekend. I will. Thank you. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. With me is uh, Dom Barrett from, is it Colchester, England? That's right. That's right, yeah, just so the, the east coast of England, not far from London. Not too far. Now, taking a look, you're the leading money winner in 2018 thus far. Obviously, you're cashing quite a bit. What is the pressure like, you know, in these tournaments? It's either you got to cash or you go home working for nothing. Yeah, that's right. You know, coming from England, it's a long way. Um, if you kind of just back yourself, you know that you're, um, if you play well, you're going to have a good tournament. So. Hopefully you go out here and, and you play well every week and uh, you know, kind of like the wins and the money will kind of takes care of itself. You just try to do your best and hope that's enough. Now you're really an accomplished international player. I mean, you've won in Germany, Qatar, the United States and uh, also Tokyo. I mean, my gosh, you get around. What is the advantage to bowling all over the world? It's a lot different where I grew up. Um, bowling's not kind of taken quite as serious. I think it used to be a little bit, but not a, as, as a bigger scale as it is in the United States. But um, yeah, traveling, I quite like traveling and I have a lot of friends who uh, travel with me internationally. Guys like Stuart Williams and Martin Larson, Oscar and Jesper from the PBA Tour. So we travel quite often and we play as many tournaments as we can around the world. And, and yeah, just been ha so happens I've been you know, fairly fortunate to win those events. Now what is it like to bowl internationally? What are the fans like there compared to the United States? Are they similar or different? It's a little bit different. I think it's a lot uh, smaller scale. Uh, you have some of the governments actually fund their bowlers to be part of um, like Olympic teams or in Asia they have um, a lot of funding for Asian games which mm -hmm. is like their Olympics and so it's a little bit different, it's done on sort of a different scale um, but I don't think there's anything like the PBA Tour. The PBA Tour is where the best bowlers in the world compete and I'm um, very uh, happy to be a part of that. Now you finished fifth in this tournament when it was bowl last year in Orlando. What are some expectations if it's like last year that you think are going to help you experience wise to uh, repeat your finish and hopefully take home the hardware? Well I hope so. Um, we're out here we're competing you know the best state bowlers in the world uh, so you know that the competition is going to be really fierce and it's going to be a, a tough environment to come and compete in if you haven't done it too many times you know you have the TV lights the intimate crowd, you get a setting where you need to compete and, and really throw good shots every game. So hopefully I'll be able to do that and hopefully in a few days time I'll be able to walk away with a trophy. Well Dom, good luck to you. Hopefully um, you'll take home the hardware. I've got seven other guys that are looking to do the same thing. Good luck on that and uh, thanks a lot for coming out. Right, thank you. Got it. Observe a domesticated human family in their natural habitat known to their species as the backyard. Oh, you think I should light it now? I think it's yeah. yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, what could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. What's it hey, it's here? Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, said, make it no, you said make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless furry friend here, yeah. humans. I appreciate it. Fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. 
Andrew Anderson of Holly recently won the USBC Masters in Syracuse, New York. A great accomplishment for a 22-year-old that counts teaching as his degree, but bowling as his profession. Uh, I've always felt close, um, but in the last couple of years, confidence is huge on the tour. Like You can't go into any tournament not expecting to win, not expecting to do well. Um, well, going into this season especially, I've had a lot of confidence and a lot of things going my way, per se. So, um, really, it's just a mindset. You know, you go in with a positive mindset and positive things happen. Anderson is considered by just about everybody on the PBA Tour to have a bright future. Yeah, Andrew's one of the really good younger guys out on tour now. He's um, had his, in the middle of a, a breakout season. He made one of the major championship shows already, and then he won the Masters, which is a huge event. So he's really in a fantastic start of the season, and... You know, it, he won't tell you this, I don't think, but he's already front player for, or front runner for player of the year. The number one seed is looking for his first career title from Holly, Michigan, Andrew Henderson! When you have the bowling skills of Andrew Anderson, you can think about making the PBA Tour a full-time profession. Now you talk about that mindset, was there one thing or was it a combination of things that said, you know what, I, I, don't, I know I'm not only good enough for the PBA Tour, but what gave you that thing where you hopped the fence and said, I know I can win out here? Why not me? You know, that's, that's what I've been telling myself. Uh, my family and I have a lot of pride in each other and knowing that uh, I have the skills to do it, you kind of just got to tell yourself to do it. Um, you can talk about it and dream about it all you want, but until you actually get an opportunity and seize the opportunity, there's not much you can uh, think about other than that. So for the last couple of years, that's all I've been thinking about is winning on the PBA Tour and to finally do it is a dream come true. And, you know, I just, I'm just going to keep telling myself, why not me? The PBA Tour was sinking in ratings and fan interest for quite a while, but a new contract with Fox Sports has kind of rejuvenated the bowlers, and Anderson is one of them. So what I like that the tour is turning into is they're giving us more opportunities. Uh, to be successful on the tour, you have to have opportunities, and you have to have opportunities to bowl against the guys you grew up watching to make you want to do it more. And what they're doing so well at right now is giving us opportunities. I have an opportunity to bowl all the majors, all the normal events. It does suck a little bit that there's not more events, but I think PBA is heading in the right direction. We got a new deal with Fox for next year, and it's going to be very exciting. Anderson's big check won at the USBC Masters will not be his only one. Something tells me that something even bigger is on the horizon. For Detroit Sports Media, this is Roy J. Akers reporting. Observe a domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Hey, you think I should light it now? I think it's yeah. Yeah? yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, what could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. What's he hey, it's here? Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, you, see, make it big. No, you said make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless right. furry friend here, yeah. humans. I appreciate it. Chris Bump. <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. With me is Sean Rash of Montgomery, Illinois. I tell you, Sean, you are the only bowler in uh, television history to have two 300 games on TV. Wow, I guess they got to chase you, huh? Well, it, it, I've had some success on... Uh, the lanes under the lights on television, uh, one at the uh, Wolf Open Championship in Oklahoma, the second at the Tournament Champions in Indianapolis, and it'd be uh, nothing better than to do it again here in Detroit where I've had a lot of success on the lanes here. So, um, yeah, I like to bowl under the lights, I guess. Well, not only do you like bowling under the lights, but you have to do a lot of adjusting on the patterns for this particular tournament. I know that there's four different ones. I, I imagine they tell you ahead of time what you're going to practice on, and you go out and do that. Is that how that works, or is it kind of uh, what is it like? Yeah, no, it's not a shot in the dark. They uh, they give us four different patterns, the different lengths. They're uh, so 36, 39, 42, and 45 feet. A lot like golf, where they say, okay, it's going to be the pin placement is going to be somewhere around here. You know where your bunkers are and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
our bowling ball is our guide. Uh, we throw that ball down the lane and it basically tells us where we need to play and what we need to do to, to make it strike and uh, also if it's not the right one. So. Now with that, now you come and you practice with this, but still you come to the you come to a tournament. And you're probably going to have to drill a couple of balls when you get here, aren't you? Well, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I've been at Brunswick Bowling headquarters in Muskegon, Michigan, just a couple of hours down the road, uh, the home of bowling, and I've been doing a lot of practice in there. I've drilled a, about 12 bowling balls over the last three days, uh, getting ready for not just this event, but all the events through the summer coming up, and uh, really excited about the new pieces that I've drilled and. Uh, I don't probably have to drill any this week while we're here in, in Detroit, but uh, if I need to, I will. Now, you have bowled on Team USA nine different times. What is it like representing the country? Uh, there's nothing better than representing your country wearing the red, white, and blue. Uh, but my time is, uh, has come to an end with them, and we're moving on to, to something else. Um, hopefully that things will change with that, and I might be back on the team. but. Right now, my, mo my main focus is uh, my team with Brunswick and all the companies I represent and, and my individual career. Now, you finished fifth in this tournament last year. What experience are you going to have from that that's going to help you this year to take home the top prize? Well, the biggest thing is just uh, focusing on myself and not trying to dictate what I can't do or what they can do and what I can do. So uh, I need to just stay focused on myself, make great shots, uh, see where the pins fall, and. Hopefully I'm in that final match and, and can improve my uh, status from last year. Now, you can't play defense in bowling because obviously you're keeping your mental game to do your best, but is there ways that you can get a little mental edge with the crowd? Because the PBA does encourage that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll have a lot of fans in the area just because of so much success I've had in the building. Uh, love coming to Thunder Bowl lanes and what Tom has done for us here. Uh, my wife and daughter are on their way with my parents. so. Uh, I know I'll have at least four fans in the in the group behind us. Well, I think you'll have a couple more with Brad and myself. Sean, thanks for coming Thank you, on, sir. and uh, good luck in the tournament. And, uh, well, you got a great stage to do it. Thank All you very much. It. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Thank you. Now we'll go on to the interview. Just three, four, or four or five questions, that's it. Um, with me is Anthony Simonson of uh, Austin, Texas. You got that tornado or sidewinder uh, wind up uh, out there on the lanes. How in the world did you get that style? Uh, you know, I just started at, at the age of three, and it was kind of one of those deals where I couldn't really get it down the lane, so I added the other hand to it, and I've just stuck with it ever since. Well, the guys that uh, do have that style that you have, several have had success over the years, but is it is it kind of like a, a high success, high risk type uh, that you have out there, or you got it corralled pretty good? Uh, you know, it, it's bowling. It's just kind of we've all got to, you know, master what's out there on the lanes. Uh, you know, now you're starting to see it a lot more with the, with the younger generations. There's more and more kids coming out. But like I said, it's, you know, really covering the same things, but it's just a different style of delivery. Now, uh, taking a look at your game, now uh, you you finished uh, what fifth in this event last year? I have you finishing as fifth in the event. That's I believe it was eight, actually. You finished eight. Well, 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 here we go. It says <laughs> fifth. Hey, that's a mistake by PR. But anyway, you you were at, you bowled in this event last year. You had you know you got a taste of it. What are you going to do? What's the difference between last year and this year that's uh, going to propel you to perhaps the championship? Uh, you know, a little different. Style this year, we're alternating patterns for every show, uh, as well as um, you know, being in a completely different bowling center, a uh, new part of the world. So it's just a completely different atmosphere. We bowled here a few times. The guys really love coming here. I think it's going to be an exciting set of shows. Well, you know, this is, I mean, coming here, you actually are taping five shows in the span of two days that are going to air over the CBS network over the next several weeks. And so I imagine, you know, when you come to an event like this, you really better bring your game because really, even though there's just one title up for grabs, you really have five different tournaments going on almost. Yeah, uh, you know, you just want to make sure you're staying sharp all the way through the competition. Uh, be bowling well, you can give yourself the best opportunity to win. Now, uh, finally, you're over at the Thunder Bowl, which is one of the renowned bowling centers in, in America, some of the greatest 
bowlers in history, not only bowled here, but have won uh, championships. I remember coming here many years ago with Carmen Salvino. Don Carter bowled in the tournament uh, as well. I mean, I talked Salvino, Dick Weber bowled, and he wasn't even a legend yet. And so, I mean, it tells you. So, I mean, you got a lot. I mean, is that something that you penciled in ahead of time, thinking, hey, we're going to bowl where the real Hall of Champions to bowl? This is a great place to end up the PBA finals. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I've bowled a few events uh, in this building. We had a you know, our summer swing here a few years ago, uh, made one of the TV shows, got the ball a little bit in the arena bay. So it's nice to have that experience. Uh, like I said, every, I know coming here that it's a historical ball in center and there's nothing you know, gets me more giddy than coming to places that has as much history as this place. It has been awesome having you on. Great luck, good luck in uh, trying to take home the championship trophy and of course, the $30,000 first prize. I'm jealous already. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. With me is a um, nine-time PBA uh, major winner. Is it nine, right? Nine. Yep. Uh, Jason Belmonte. Jason, you uh, really locked down that uh, match. It looked like when you uh, left that uh, that impossible count and you made that, it seemed like it turned things right around for you. Yeah, that's that's a momentum swinging, um, you know, frame for me. I, I knew if I make that spare um, and then find a way to string some strikes after it, it was going to make Anthony feel a little bit more pressured. Um, you know, he was bowling great, but like the way that my bowling ball started to change in its ball reaction, I knew his was going to as well. I just had to stay patient um, and wait for that error from him and then kind of jump all over it. Well, you know, in, in that you were both lost in the, for just a couple frames in that match, but just like that, it just seemed like it was a momentum changer. What was going through your mind so you could make that difference-making shot? Well, I mean, you just look at your target and, you know, you just honestly close your eyes and and let it go and just hope that you know the pins do their job along with the ball once i threw it i, I was really confident i was going to make it um and, and that's a really nice feeling to know that when you've let the ball go you're like hey I, this is a really good chance to make a pretty tough split you have won nine major titles what 18 overall the rest of the guys combined have nine and so a lot of them they know how to win majors as well but it's a big difference between uh you know, kind of been there a little bit and someone who's done it quite a bit. Isn't that an advantage for you? Yeah, I, look, I think, though, in this situation, the guys that I'm playing against were the, the top eight players from the last three years, which tells the story that we've all made television a lot. Um, we're used to this environment. We're obviously champions in this environment. So I don't take anything for granted. Even if I have a little bit more experience than someone else, um, you know, I never think that... I never think it's an advantage because I feel like as soon as I start to allow myself to think I have an advantage, I'm, I probably will relax a little bit. So as far that's as I'm not a good thing. No. So as far as I'm concerned, whether it's true or not, I always feel like I'm the underdog. That's how I want to feel. You know, I've got to earn this victory. I got to fight for it. Um, and that's honestly how I'm going to finish my career out is by thinking like that. And talking about uh, one last question on, on your career, what does a new look uh, PBA look like? I mean, it's changed a lot since you started out. What is the best thing you like about today's PBA and where it's going forward? Look, I think the most exciting thing that we have is uh, that the new deal that we've worked out with Fox Sports. Um, the whole industry uh, is really excited about this. Fox is um, a huge network yeah. and they really love bowling um, and I really am looking forward to, and not just me, but all the guys out here, really looking forward to seeing what that relationship is going to look like in the next few years. Jason, I know you're a busy guy. you got a lot of fans. I'll let you Thank get you to them. Much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stuart Green. Ashley Branch. And my name is Cole Butler. Hi, my name is Amanda Hoffman, and I play softball. And I play basketball. I play soccer. Basketball and football at Petoskey High School. Point City High School. I play soccer at Elk Rapids High School. Grayling High School. At Harbor Springs High School. Thank you for tuning in and watching a Michigan High School Athletic Association contest. We hope to see you back online soon watching more of our great sportsmanship, athletes, and extracurricular excellence. And extracurricular excellence. We are MHSAA. Most 
party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. With me is Tom Clark, PBA Commissioner. Tom, PBA Tour has had a lot of changes over the last few years. What are some of the exciting things that, uh, that you've seen happen? Well, I think the first thing that comes to mind is the style of play and the players that are succeeding in the PBA. They're very young. They're very exciting. They uh, bowl in ways that people never really would have even imagined a couple decades ago. With I two love the tornado wind-up. That's what I call <laughs> yeah. it. Well, these two-hand bowlers and also just one-hand bowlers that are able to put more revolutions and speed on a bowling ball than anyone's ever seen in the history of the game. And the fact they're coming from all over the world. Like, just of the top eight players we have here, we have people from Sweden, Australia, and England, and, of course, everywhere in the U.S. And so you have young players, you have, <laughs> sorry, you have, you have young players, you have players from all over the world, and you have exciting styles of play. <laughs> um, the really big thing from a business standpoint that's going on with the PBA is we've been on ESPN since 1979. It's been a long-standing great relationship. But we have this opportunity in 2019 to move to Fox Sports. So you'll find the PBA on Fox next year and it will mean a lot of improvements. More bowling on television, more bowling on uh, broadcast television on Big Fox and on FS1. And then you'll see uh, just uh, uh, a, a different different amounts of live bowling on television so we're really really excited about that new relationship well you know it, there's something to be said for bowling on cable but anytime you bowl on network TV the the Fox the NBC CBS in this case it is Fox yeah. that's exciting because those are the first stations that you see it doesn't matter whether it's satellite cable or whatever and that's a huge thing yeah. because it seems like when the PBA lost ABC many years ago with Chris Shankle and now, it, you know, things were different. Now maybe this is a great opportunity for you. Yeah, well, that was a, like a really sad moment in the history of our game, and and uh, when we lo when we lost ABC in 1996, and um, you know, this is our 60th anniversary of the PBA. It was founded in 1958 in Akron, and um, in our 60th year to be able to make this announcement about a rebirth of the game and a chance to be back on broadcast television uh, is really special and, and it feels like this is going, you know, this year we've been celebrating the 60 most memorable moments in the history of the PBA. Yeah. And one of them actually was the last show on ABC. One of them was the first show on ABC. Mm -hmm. And I think that 20 years down the road, 25 years down the road, when they look back at the 75th anniversary or the 100th anniversary of the PBA, this move to Fox will be one of those uh, great moments in the history of the game. You know, this arena is extremely historic. In this very room, when I was in middle school, way back when dinosaurs roamed the earth I met Don Carter oh, and, and right Dick Weber he wasn't even they had the great and the greatest tournament Dick Weber was still among the great yeah. and, and and so you know I met uh, you know I can say Don Carter Earl Anthony Mark Roth everybody bowled here and the ladies bowled with the men and they had their own they had their own tournament and so that when you have uh, you know great moment where you've you got the PBA finals happening in here and there's a lot of excitement it kind of all ties ties together in a nice neat little ball. This is a great place to be back during our 60th anniversary. You know, and 10 years ago, when we first started the World Series of Bowling, this was the location we had the first one. And uh, it was really an awesome event and an awesome undertaking. And what really gave it wings was the fact we were in this historic building. And I can remember looking back at the old photos and, you know, they had the team event here before the PBA ever existed. And the, and the beer teams would compete and teams from different cities would compete in this arena when they really only had four lanes in the arena and it was set up yeah, more for Yeah, there's fans. pictures on the wall yeah, out there. Yeah, the pictures are awesome. And now we filled it in with more lanes, but it's still, you know, really, I think arguably, if not definitely, the best place to watch bowling is in this arena. And we love to do television in here. So it's, yeah. uh, we'll be back for years to come. A couple more questions, but you've done some exciting things. I think the Japan Cup that's been created, I like the celebrity tournament that's being done. Those are some nice niche things. What kind of feedback are you getting from the bowling community? 
Well, I think with, with like with everything, when you do something new, it's always there's a little bit of a fear of well, what is this? And maybe we yeah. don't like this, and this isn't tradition. But I think in almost all cases, people you know get used to things, and then they realize that this is really really beneficial to the game. I mean, like the Chris Paul celebrity event. You know, we have such a young audience for that show, and then when I come here and I see the young fans that we have, uh, you know, I didn't see that many young fans when I first started with the PBA, and that's really, really exciting to me. And I feel like when we do exciting events that include celebrities and, and other athletes and having fun bowling and really respecting the PBA players, and when we start things like the PBA League, which shows the PBA players uh, competing as part of a team, and you see their personalities come out a little bit more those things are attractive to kids and then the kids get to know a young player like a like a EJ Tackett or a Marshall Ken or a Jesper Spencer and these guys are only 22 23 24 years old themselves and they want to come out and meet them and, and I've seen so many kids here this uh, this weekend getting their pictures taken with the pros and um, it's really great to see yeah a final question you know I think going back to the network TV thing I remember when the PBA tour had a lot of outside sponsors that had nothing to do with both I right. mean, and I ho hopefully getting back to the network, you can start seeing the car companies coming back, the beer companies, and other people that see the beneficial relationship. And hopefully that's what you see. Is that part of the model or part of the thinking that went behind that? Absolutely. You're, you're right on target. I think probably... Um, the best part of the new Fox relationship with the PBA is that Fox itself will be selling the advertising and sponsorships into our programming. And that's different from what we've had in the past uh, with ESPN where the, the sales responsibility fell to us. And when we were just trying to sell into specific programming that was on ESPN, yeah. you know, sometimes you run into situations where you talk to sponsors that already advertise on ESPN. So they you know they, they didn't need to get on, on ESPN that way now with Fox they're already talking to all these different corporate corporations and companies and businesses that want to spot that want to sponsor and advertise on sports networks and to be able to include the PBA in the portfolio I, I think is going to be the answer to the problem of bringing people from outside the industry in to support, not only support the game, but use our game to reach big audiences. Well, it does, I, we are a runway. Well, you know, Tom, that's yeah. right. That's okay, though, Tom. It must I like be that good. It's busy. Yeah, I well, like that it's busy. If we, if we busy's good, here, folks. If we were standing here and nobody was here, I'd be really nervous. But yeah. we're in well, this arena and it's packed yeah. with fans, so they can walk in front all they want. As we wrap it up, it must be great to be the CEO. And I can, next time I see you, yeah. I'm sure that we're going to have even better things to talk about. So, really Tom, good. thanks a lot for coming on to Detroit Sports Media, and we'll certainly uh, make sure that we get that out there. One final thing, I've talked to some of the players in a closing salvo. They are excited Good. about what's going on. I've heard three or four of them talk. I was over talking to someone, Andrew Anderson. I did a feature oh, yeah. story. Well, we well, had that well, coming. Yeah. And he, he and some of the other bowlers are so excited saying, you know, we are going in the right direction. I love it. So I'm going to compliment you going out. And so back to Detroit Sports Media. Thanks. Observe. A domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Hey, you think I should light it now? I think it's him. Yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. Hey, it's Smokey. It's Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, you, see, to make it big. No, you can't make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless okay. furry friend here, yeah. humans. I appreciate it. Chris Bump. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi.